So it started out by googling about Joe Rogan studio and checking out images from the internet showing details around the place. Now from what I've read, Joe has actually moved studios, but I decided just to pick the one that I thought was the most iconic. I then copy pasted a bunch of those images into one huge image file for my reference. I started modeling with a cube, edited the vertices so that it forms a wall, and then just duplicated that repeatedly so that it covers the studio. And right after that, I just added a simple plane for the floor. Since I didn't have the dimensions for the place, I just got a couple of shapes and then modeled them to the standard height for the chairs and tables so that I can use them as point of reference to eyeball the rest of the studio. And from here, I just took my sweet time trying to tweak it back and forth until it looked right. Now there's also this slight extrusion on one of the walls which I easily modeled with a few basic cuts and extrusions. I also made some cuts from the other wall and bridged the gaps to make a hole for the door. Now from what I can see, the ceiling is divided by rectangles and I'm guessing it has 6 rectangular lights. So I got a plane, then stretched it to fit the ceiling, inserted 7 edges on one side and 6 for the other. I then just did an inset, separated the frames, picked the 6 rectangles from the center and separated that too for the lights. I then added a bit of thickness using the solidify modifier for these and then added another layer of ceiling right above everything. I then put them all into one collection and then just hid them so that I can work on the interior in the meantime. Two of the walls are covered by curtains. Now the way I would make one is by subdividing a plane multiple times, assigning the top part to a vertex group so that when I apply the cloth modifier, I can just pin that vertex group to make it hold the curtain in place. I would then get an empty and just constrain the curtain scale to it. So now if I play the animation while rescaling the empty, the curtain is going to follow along with the wrinkles. I'd also add some collisions to the other objects that it's going to interact with and then parent the curtain to the empty so that I can move it around and collide it with the other objects. Now I literally poured my entire soul into making this content so please don't forget to leave a like so that this video gets recommended to Joe Rogan. To model this chair, I just got a cube, cut it into half, applied the subsurface and mirror modifier, cut and extrude to form a cross for the backrest, and then add another cube for the seat. I then just kept on adding cuts to the parts where I want to keep sharp and just kept on tweaking until it looked good. I then got a busy curve and adjusted the handles, added some depth, tweaked the profile, and then rescale. I then added a cylinder and scaled it down too, added a bit of detail, and then put it right down at the bottom. Now the trick to work with this footrest is by getting a cylinder with 60 sides, selecting 7 right from the top and deleting the rest. Use the mirror and the array modifier with the count of 5, change the offset to object, and then set that to an empty that is centered to the cylinder. Now that the array is linked to the empty, you can now rotate that to 72 degrees and so now it's so much easier to model with everything instanced and arranged in a radial manner. It also helps to keep the cursor at the center of the object so that you can snap to it while scaling. Now for the base, get a cube and scale it down for the legs, get a cylinder for the wheels, extract some of the upper portion for the casters and add some thickness. Center the origin to the 3D cursor and then apply the same mirror and array modifier. And from here, just model it like the rest of the other parts. Now the tables are pretty easy. I just cut the rectangles a couple of times, beveled, removed the insides to make some splits, and then extruded to make them look like large wooden planks. I then got another cube for the legs and made instances, extracted them in edit mode for the supports, positioned them at an angle, and then cut them with the knife tool. Now there seems to be some subtle details on the legs, so I decided to slice it into half and use the mirror modifier again, so that all the details I put in will apply to both sides. I also extracted one of the edges and kept on stretching it for the base plates, and then I got a six-sided cylinder and rescaled it for the bolts, and then just duplicated it on the plate. Lastly, I added a bit of bevel to everything with the clamp option turned off, and this will help make it look realistic. I modeled the door by extruding a vertex and covering the entire opening, making insets for the door jams and then removing these bottom parts. I then separated these jams and used a solidify modifier for the thickness. I then got this other cube and adjusted it for this on-air sign above the door. Extracted the front part, scaled it down, separated it, and then made an extrusion. Now to make the frames, I simply did an inset to the front face and then assigned the different elements to different materials. I also changed the viewport display color for these just so I can see them in Blender and this is going to make applying materials easier in Unreal. I then grabbed the text, wrote down the whole thing, put a bit of value in the extrusion, changed the font by clicking on this folder icon, and then just kept adjusting from there. 
there. By the way, you gotta convert the text into meshes because Unreal Engine doesn't read text from Blender. Now, if you look closely, the door and the sign actually has some kind of acoustic insulation wrapped around it that is making all the wrinkles. So I went over to sculpt mode, turned on the dynamic topology, and then just started painting with a draw brush. You can adjust the detail size to make the smaller wrinkles. Also, you can hold down control to draw the opposite effect and shift to smoothen the wrinkles out. And you can also adjust the strength and the size of the brush right here. Now you can wrap it up with the cloth brush and when you're happy and you know it, just clap your hands, go to remesh, adjust the values and hit OK. And now we have our insulated door. Now I also did the exact same thing to the insulation for the on-air sign. Pretty cool. Now I know this doesn't belong to this version of the studio, but I thought it would be cool to include Joe's neon sign. And so I edited and straightened up this 2D image of the neon sign and used it as a texture for a plane inside Blender. I then got a basic curve and then traced all the lights with the draw tool, changed the resolution so that the curves don't appear crooked, and separated the different light colors from each other. I then went over to the depth option and gave them different thickness values. I also traced the UFO outline for its base, and I almost forgot to mention that I would actually clean these traces up by setting all the handles to free, deleting the ones that are unnecessary, and adjusting the others to make them more accurate. And for this part of the model, I used the extrude option. Now I modeled the bottom part starting with the plane and again cut it into half for the mirror modifier and extruded its lower portion to get the T-shape. There's nothing really new about working on this except for the part where I duplicated the whole island, centered the cursor right there, and used a spin tool on one of the edges. From here, I just added planes and shape it for these wing-like parts and also did that for the marquee sign thing. Again, I used some extruded text, added some planes at the back of each letter, and for these three panels on the sides, I again just extracted these from its original base shape. Now for these white button shapes, I just took a sphere, deleted the center part and extruded the edges, cut it into half, and just duplicated it all over the place. I also got a sphere and flattened it for the smaller ones, and I also traced the UFO image in 2D and used it as texture. And that's pretty much it for the neon sign. And now for the rest of the other accessories. I got these images from Google and edited this flag with a bunch of overlays so that it looks worn out. And then I made a bunch of rectangles and stick them on the walls and use those images as textures. And now I got my Blender Kit add-on turned on, and I also went over to Sketchfab to get some assets for all these clutter that's going on on Joe's busy table. I got some sound equipments, computers, accessories, and more importantly, I hunted down some aliens and cryptids. Now I actually simplified these by applying all the modifiers, merging all the parts and removing the parents, then I just set most of these aside and exported separately later on to avoid crashes. Now I also have this set of various checkered textures that I made myself, which I basically just applied to everything while unwrapping. So so that I can see a bit about how it's going to look like while checking the tiling for Unreal Engine. By the way, I just thought it would be cool to share this rough 3D file of what I built. So the link's gonna be down in the description. You can do whatever you want with it. You can render it, redesign it, feed it to your dog. Give me a shout out if you're gonna post it somewhere on social media. To export this to Unreal, I have my Datasmith exporter add-on turned on and you can get this free from GitHub. Once you get this, you just gotta go to File, Export, choose Datasmith, and then pick a location. I am using Unreal Engine 5.2. Now you you can use a third person template for this so you can walk around the place, but I personally have my own meta human character that I coded some time ago. I kinda set this character to do a few things designed specifically for this type of content. In order to import the files, go to settings, make sure your datasmith importer is turned on in the plugins list. Now I made an entirely new open world level for this project first, and from there I just clicked the add button, went to datasmith, and got the file. Now just to show you, once we get the model, we are going to be walking through walls and it's all going to be dark inside. So so the first thing that I would do is add a rectangular light and copy paste it all over the ceiling. I then added a post process volume and then changed its bounce to infinite for the settings that we're gonna be tweaking later on. And now to fix the collision problem, just go to the geometries folder of the imported model, select everything, right click and go to assets, actions and hit bulk edit via property matrix. From there just find the collision complexity and change it to use complex collision as simple. To apply materials, you wanna make sure your quick sell plugin is on and that you are signed in. And if you haven't got an account, making one is absolutely free. And this is going to give you some free materials and 3D assets that you can just drag into the scene. Now for these quick sum materials, I'd usually tweak the tiling if I didn't get it right in Blender. And I'd also work on the albedo controls and tint to change the values and the colors. And most importantly, I'd turn on this two-sided option to fix inverted surfaces like these curtains. I'd make sure to make copies of these materials for different objects to keep the original ones. And from here, I just kept on adding and tweaking texture 
textures, importing more assets, and I also went back to Blender to do some minor adjustments and added some wires for the electronics using curves. This nightmare took a couple of days just going back and forth and a lot of time was just spent on organizing the imported textures from the assets and trying to figure out a quicker way of accessing them. This is my first time working with this crazy amount of clutter. Now a lot of my own materials are really basic and straightforward with a few cheap lazy tricks here and there. My parent material for the lights is basically made up of a 2D gradient I made and unwrapped back in Blender and it's plugged into the emissive that's being multiplied for the intensity with a vector 3 for the base color. And my parent material for objects with plain flat colors is just made up of a vector 3 with parameters on the reflections. Similarly for the frames, I just used a sample texture node this time for the image that's plugged into a cheap contrast node and a multiply node to adjust the different values of its instances. And I also did the same pattern for its emissive. That way I can also use the same materials for the computer screens. Now it's mostly the same pattern for the parent material for the assets but this time with a desaturation node with a 1 minus. It also has a blend overlay with a vector 3 for better control of the colors and sample texture perimeters plugged into its normal and opacity. The glass materials are simply set to translucent with the frontal node plugged into a lur. Now to make these animated screens just get a media player and check this pop up for the auto texture and now if you drag that texture to the screen it is going to make a material out of it. Now you're gonna want to edit this and make it look a bit more legit. Change the shading model to unlit and plug that into its emissive and multiply that with something like 0.25 for its intensity. And now you can just drag one of Joe's videos into the project and select it in the media player. To get this to play in the game in the animation, just get a level sequence and put it in the scene. And now you want to make sure this autoplay option is turned on. Double click on the sequence to edit and then track the player. You can also stretch this track right here to adjust the media length. And lastly, you just gotta specify the texture by hitting right click and selecting the one with the imported video. And now you can hit play to check and bada beam bada boom, you now have your animated screen. And now I even went a bit further and edited a short clip of Joe's logo with some effects in DaVinci and then played it on the other TV screen. Now I actually decided decided to delete the default lighting in the beginning because it was kind of messing with the fog for some reason and use an HDRI instead. So I used this HDRI backdrop plugin, used a free one that I got from Polyhaven by just dropping it into the content browser and then just dragging it into the cube maps. And then right in its geometry, I searched for its ray tracing visibility and turned it off and that fixed my frog problem. Now for the post-process volume settings, I ended up having my metering mode set to auto exposure with the compensation of a negative 1, the bloom set to convolution at 0.35 for the light sources to glow a bit, and I also have a bit of chromatic aberration at 0.5 to keep everything from getting too sharp, you know that is just my own preference. I also got this really subtle lens flare, the global illumination and reflection is set to lumen with a bit more final gather quality to avoid flickering and having the reflection settings stepped up. And lastly, I also have my translucency set up to ray tracing. Now for the b-roll, we're gonna add a bunch of cameras all over the place, add another sequencer to get them to play in the animation, and track each camera, then add keyframes to the transform according to how you want them to move. Now what I really like to do is use this look at feature by selecting the subject with the eyedropper and just tweaking a bit of its offset. This allows you to auto track and pivot to the subject of your scene. And by the way, when you're adding another camera to the same sequencer, which I always do, don't forget to bind them in the camera cuts for them to actually play. And you might want to change those keyframe curves into linear to avoid those awkward pauses in between transitions. I also like to make those rack focus shots by getting something like an empty actor and then snapping it to the subject and just tracking it down and keying its movement like what we did with the cameras. Next thing you want to do is get the camera to focus on it and so when you animate its movement, the focus of the camera is going to follow that actor. Now once you got all the cameras set, just turn on the Movie Render Cube plugin, hit this render icon, go to settings. Now I'd usually just have an anti-aliasing set to TSR with 8 samples. And then I just put in a bunch of console variables that I have saved, which I am going to share down in the description. But basically what I'm trying to do here is just get rid of the flickering by mostly turning off some of the denoising options and stepping up the scene's overall quality. From here, I just set the output directly hit accept and finally render local. If you're thinking about subscribing, this channel is all about the open source software's Blender and Unreal Engine. I just hit 1k subs recently and I am super thankful for that. Looking forward to making it to 5k subs this year. So share this with your 3D friends and share this with Joe Rogan if you know him.